Hello everybody, it's Fiona Hooper here again and I'm here today to talk about taking photographs of your dog for a portrait commission. Um, first of all there are some useful things that you could have to hand. The obvious one is a camera or phone, preferably set to the highest resolution possible to get some good clear photographs with lots of detail. Uh, another thing that you could need is a lead and somewhere secure that you could attach the dog to by the lead to keep them in place. Um, some treats or a favourite toy, a squeaky toy maybe. Something that your dog really responds to well. Some dogs are food orientated and others are toy orientated. Um, or another dog, something that will attract their attention and keep them looking interested. A helper or two even can be very helpful as well, very useful. And um, that they're the main things I think you actually need, but um, going forward, let's just talk about the background. So if you want the, photo the portrait to be of the dog in a particular location or background on a favorite chair or something, then try to take the photographs of the dog in that place so that they come out, the dog comes out to scale with the background and I'm not having to try and determine how, how large or small the dog would be in relation to that background. Bear in mind also the colour of your dog. If it's a black dog, try and go for a light coloured background. And if you've got a white dog, try and go for a dark coloured background. Grass is normally quite good for nearly all colours of dogs actually as a background, so that, that could solve the issue. Um, decide on whether you would like a head study, such as the one behind me here of the dog. This one's got a little, a small one as well with holding favourite toy. Um, and or whether you would like a full body portrait. Now if you're thinking about a full body portrait of the dog, then try and photograph them on some sort of hard surface. If the dog's standing in long grass, we actually lose quite a bit of the lower legs and the feet and all dogs have different shaped feet, certain breeds have different shapes from others. So trying to make that up, unless I do the portrait of the dog in grass, it makes it a little bit tricky. Uh, if you're doing a headshot, then certain breeds do favour a full frontal, full face headshot such as bull mastiffs. Um, I've got one, an example here. So a bull mastiff, because they do have this very large and well-defined head, which is a feature of the breed, they're often portrayed in photographs or portraits with a full face shot. Um, whereas the three quarter shot, like the flat coat retriever behind, or for example, this little Parson Muscle Terrier, that can be more interesting for a lot of dogs because it gives a bit more um, idea of the shape of the head bit more interesting as I say. Um, so keep that in mind. The dog may also have a characteristic pose or a look. You know, maybe they talk, you're talking to them and they put their head on one side and or they like to lie in a particular way and look at you. If it's something like a lying down shot you're probably best to try and creep up on them unawares and get some good photographs in. They may not adopt that position um, you know willingly but it depends on your dog and how trained they are and whether they're used to a command to, to lie down or whatever. Um, lighting. Overcast outdoor conditions are generally best for portrait photographs. So you've got enough light to get the definition and the details, but not so bright as to make the dog squint, in which case we don't get their lovely eyes showing through. Um, and every dog's eyes are different, the same as the feet and ears, everything else. So I want to make your dog's eyes look like your dog, not just any other dog. Um, also with outdoor light, it's much better for getting accurate colour for your fur, the dog's fur, rather than under artificial light where it can give a very yellow cast, for example, or fluorescent lights can give a greenish cast, which is obviously not going to be very flattering to your dog. If you have a helper, it's useful if you, if you find something that you can safely and securely tie your dog to, then tie them to that with you know, enough lead that they can be comfortable. Be in front of the dog, 
have your helper stand behind you, preferably to one side of it, unless you want full face shots, and get them to attract the dog's attention with treats or toys, jumping up and down, laughing, smiling, anything behind you to get the dog's attention, get them looking alert and awake. And it's a good idea to have them stand to one side of you for some shots and then to the other side for some other shots just to get some, you know, a lot of variation and so that in a portrait, if one shot didn't quite show enough detail of one bit, I've got another photograph that I could look at as well to give me that information. Um, the other thing with taking the photographs is please try and get down to your dog's level. Um, there's a, a, a thing called foreshortening, so if you're looking down at your dog, they've got their nose up looking at you, the nose is going to look proportionately bigger than the rest of the head, which will sort of fade away behind the nose, which can be fun. It can get, lead to an interesting looking portrait, but it's generally not what people want if you want a realistic portrait. So try and get down to their level. When you're ready to take the shot, if you haven't got a helper, you'll have to try and hold the camera or phone really steady with one hand and have treats in the other hand. Um, but otherwise, try and keep your elbows against your sides to keep the camera or phone steady and if you're crouched down a good idea there is to to maybe put your your elbows on your knees to dry it again and keep it steady so we don't get camera shake and blurred images good clear photos are definitely the best for working from for a portrait anyway i hope that's helped and if you've got any other questions please don't hesitate to get in touch and i'll see you again soon take care Bye.